Hello, I'm an old fart, and I have a guilty pleasure. I like knives. I am not an expert or an official representative of anything or anybody in any way. I just like knives. And for uh, actually a little over a year now, through the COVID pandemic, you've been joining me roughly every week on a little tour through my collection of small folding pocket knives. And I have appreciated the company. Thank you. Today we're going to look at this little knife. Uh, in fact, two knives like this. Uh, this is a Quiet Carry IQ, and uh, for reasons I'll get into, I actually have a couple of them in different colors, but uh, we'll have a look at this knife. Uh, and before I go into the, uh, you know, why this knife and etc., I'll just mention I, I got some feedback from a, uh, a listener that they hoped, uh, they suggested I zoom in a little bit more on the picture, you know, more knife, less table, they said. So, and as I explained in the comment, that the reason I had it out as far as I did was you know, I tend to flail my hands around, and it's not that easy to keep them on camera. Um, but I thought I'd come in, so this is about 20% closer, a little bit, a little bigger view of the knife, and uh, I will try to keep my eye on the screen and keep things on camera. I've actually marked the boundaries of my on-screen tabletop, sort of here and here, with little bits of tape. So hopefully that'll let me keep things online a little better. So anyway. I, I've liked the Quiet Carry IQ knives for a long time. Had one for quite a while, and then an opportunity. I've had the, this one for quite a while, and then an opportunity came by to pick up this one as well. And I, I liked the sound of it and look of it. And it turns out I like it even better than I expected to. Um, for a long time, I didn't have any Quiet Carry knives because they don't have any distributors, uh, or at least any out of country distributors. And and I try to avoid shipping knives across the border. I don't live in the United States. Um, however, I've had good experience with Quiet Carry. They, they ship knives uh, using a, a professional shipper with all the paperwork filled out properly, and unlike many other brands, I've never had any border problems with Quiet Carry, so I guess I've got a little more confident buying from them and, and occasionally do so. So anyway, I had this knife for a long time, uh, and then recently added this one. So formally, this is a Quiet Carry. This is the IQ. This is the all black model, black titanium, black carbon fiber inlay, black blade. This one is fairly new. This is the uh, the titanium bottle, uh, titanium bodied model. Uh, but normally their bodies are stonewashed, as this side is. This side they called their knurled model, and it is fully knurled. If you can see that there. Um, now what surprised me, and we'll come back to this, but what surprised me is that although it is stonewashed, the knurling makes it seem really bright and polished. So anyway, other than the uh, knurled titanium frame, the same knife. Um, they have a whole bunch of models, which uh, and the model code is just the different finishes. So you can get you know, satin or stonewashed or knurled body, satin blade, stonewashed blade, black blade, etc. Other than that, they are all identical knives. Uh, I will use, uh, let's see, I think, I think I'm going to use this one for the general conversation because it seems like it will pick up better on camera. Uh, mechanism, it is a side flipper, as you can see, running on caged ceramic bearings, very smooth. We'll come back to that. Uh, and it is a traditional titanium frame lock on this side. And there is, I will mention, because it'll be on the things I like list, there is a hardened steel lock face insert in there. Um, so a quite a traditional modern. See, there I am wandering off camera already because I'm not used to how close in I am. So, so a traditional modern flipper design. Uh, the size, this is a small knife. Uh, it's 168 millimeters, which is about 0.9 pocket calculators. Um, somebody commented to me that they thought the pocket calculator measurement was a little bit weird and couldn't I do anything more traditional. So I said, sure, I've got 
other things. So, you know, we could do it this way, for example. I mean, I've, I've had this all along, but the reason I haven't typically been using this to, uh, to measure knives is that I thought the log scale might confuse people. So, anyway, it is sort of 20.1 log slide rule, if that uh, is easier for anybody to understand. And, of course, you're supposed to compare things to other knives. So it's uh, slightly smaller than a mini Griptilian, which is 172 millimeters. And it is slightly larger than a Kaiser Feist. And it happens to be about exactly the same size as a Lion Steel Best Man, although, of course, they're completely different knives. Um, the weight is 62 grams, fairly light. That's the same as the, the Benchmade 945 Mini, and, and of course it's heavier than the absurdly light Benchmade Bug Out, which is made out of some kind of anti-gravity anti material, and is just stupidly light. So anyway, a small, compact, light knife. The blade is interesting. The, uh, the steel is Elmax steel, which I confess uh, I didn't know much about, I still don't know much about. Um, I did some reading on it and found that uh, it was considered to, it was you know, lots of write-ups that said best all-round knife steel that were dated back in about 2014. So I, I think it's not a modern super steel, but 2014 is only you know, eight years ago and at the time it was considered damn good. Uh, and again it was called a good all-round steel, tough, good edge retention, good corrosion resistance and so on. So, no doubt there's better ones now. Um, the idea of sort of a really good all-round steel has a sort of a magna cut feeling to it in modern terminology. So anyway, from everything I've read, good balance of edge retention, corrosion resistance, and so on. Uh, it was hard to sharpen, I'll mention. I'll come back to that in a moment. Um, the blade shape is called a modified sheep's foot. Um, and it has a small, very small, there we are, sharpening choil. Nowhere near big enough to act as a finger choil, but helps protect the shoulder when sharpening. There is a clip. It is a interesting clip. It's milled, solid milled titanium, and yet deep carry. On most knives that use a milled clip, the result is shallow carry because there's all this milled metal there, but this one manages to be both milled and deep carry, so it's very nice, very attractive clip, and it holds really well, very strong hold. Um, the, uh, there is no lanyard hole and really nowhere to put one. I guess there is a hole in the clip, but that would make no sense. That would interfere with its clippiness, so let's say no to lanyard hole. And you know, for my left-handed friends, is it ambidextrous? Well, you know, sort of, partially. Being a side flipper, the opening is, of course, ambidextrous. I think even I, awkward me, can open that with my left hand. Look at that, wow. But of course, being a frame lock, uh, the f closing is not ambidextrous. That's really designed for right hand, and there is no option to move the clip to the other side. So let's say no, it's not an ambidextrous knife. Manufactured in Taiwan. I don't know the name of the manufacturer, but the... Uh, IQ, uh, quite carry, says they are made in Taekwon. And it is well made, beautiful finishing, beautiful tolerances. So, some likes and dislikes. Uh, what do I like? I like a lot about these knives. I'm going to put them both on screen here. I really like the simple appearance. These are clearly designed as a small, sort of a minimalist knife. It's not a miniature hunting knife, it's not a weapon, it's not a self-defense knife. It is a small, minimalist, unobtrusive pocket tool. And I really like that because that's really what I collect. Particularly the black. I like the appearance of the black one. Now I've said in a number of other videos that I don't like black blades, and normally that's true. I don't really see the point of a black blade other than trying to, you know, disguise when you're doing something horrible in the dark. Um, and uh, it just never connected with me. But on this one, I think it's perfect. Being all black and yet small and light, it reminds me of a tuxedo. And in fact, one of my uh, friends, when I first showed it to them, called it a tuxedo knife. Uh, and I think that's perfect. You know, tuxedo knife, not a, not a ninja wannabe, which is sort of the other possible purpose of a black blade. The knurled surface is amazingly attractive. I was quite surprised. Because it is still called stonewashed, I expected it to be knurled and yet a dull finish. 
but the knurling provides, uh, produces so many reflective surfaces that it just looks like a jewel. It's really quite beautiful to look at. It absolutely sparkles, so I'm very impressed with the look of both of the knives. The action, I'll just put that one away, the action is lovely, it's easy, easy to open. The detent is not absurdly strong, smooth, quite quiet when it opens. It locks well, it's a good lock there. It unlocks easily, and with that hardened locked face there's no lock stick and I don't expect any to develop, so I like everything about the mechanism. It's also very comfortable. It's surprisingly comfortable to hold for a small knife. I don't get a full four finger grip. But this end where my pinky sits is angled and it just sits nicely against there with no corner or hot spot. So it's actually a remarkably comfortable knife to hold and cut with. And as is normal with side flippers, the flipper tab becomes a finger rest, helping me keep my finger off the blade. And the clip is small, and so it really doesn't become a hot spot. So that is just a surprisingly comfortable grip in the hand. See, there I am again, holding it like that, half the knife is off screen. If I've got to use this smaller frame, I have to learn to hold things like this. So, um, so comfortable hold. The blade is a good length. Uh, it is, I don't remember the number now, I forgot to look it up, but it is less than three inches. And I couldn't stand not knowing, so I looked it up. The blade is 2.9 inches long, so for you three inch people, uh, that is within that magic area that becomes a problem. Um, the blade shape is interesting, the modified sheep's foot, they call it. Honestly, didn't like it when I first saw these knives. In fact, it was a reason that I didn't buy one for a while, because it just... I like drop point blades, you know, simple classic lines. I don't particularly like Tonto blades. This looks sort of Tonto-ish. Um, and so it was just something I didn't really care for. Well, eventually I bought one, and I must say, I, I still don't really love the look of the blade, but it is actually a very useful blade shape. In particular, what it works well for, um, I know this is not this kind of ruler, but it's just what I have on hand. It's really useful for scoring. You know, if you ever want to run the blade against a ruler along you know, a piece of paper on a desk and score it, this blade shape actually works really well for that. So, so I guess, you know, I have to say this is okay. The, the shape is, serves a purpose well, and it's growing on me. Uh, the other nice thing about the blade uh, is it was nicely symmetrical out of the box. The, the, uh, with a lot of production knives, I find the grind is quite different on one side than on the other, not on this. It was quite symmetric. Um, the international shipping worked well, as I mentioned. Uh, not cheap, but got me through customs so, you know, and border without any problem, and I appreciated that too. A few things I don't like. Uh, first, let me bring in the black blade. Here we are here. And I'll just close this. On the black knife, th this doesn't apply on, on the uh, neural knife, because this is a solid titanium scale. This is two pieces, titanium there, and then carbon fiber inlay there. And it's not a perfect join. I can feel that lip there, not a big deal. But worse, this screw, the screw that is holding the carbon fiber scale in place, is rough. It actually feels like it may have been damaged in the, in the threading and tightening. It's just got a rough surface on it. So when I'm holding this knife like this to flip it, my thumb is sitting on that screw getting ready to flip it, I can feel that screw. There's a, an abrasion there. And on such a gorgeous, beautiful, tuxedo-y looking knife, I shouldn't be able to feel that screw. It should be smoother or rounder or more recessed. I'm not sure which. I thought about uh, swapping it with this screw, the one that is holding the clip in place, but they're not the same length. I can't do that. Um, I'm sure I could order another screw, but you know, there's a limit to how obsessive I'm going to, I'm willing to be about these things. So, anyway, um, just not crazy about the fact that I can feel that. Now, another thing I'll mention is that uh, I think you've already seen this. It can misfire if you're too gentle with opening. Uh, now, of course, I can't make it happen. If you're too gentle with opening, you can get, well, a misfire where it only opens partially. So you have to not be too gentle. Uh, the other thing I will say, and this is more serious criticism, is it wasn't as sharp as I would have liked out of the box. Usefully sharp, you know, it could cut string, 
but not razor sharp. It wouldn't easily cut paper out of the box. And I think a factory edge should be paper cutting sharp. Um, it was worse on the black. The, the knurled surface would cut paper barely. The black, well, that's not it. <laughs> the black really wouldn't. It would tear paper and not cut it. So I, I certainly didn't like that. Um, it improved a little bit with uh, some stropping, so I guess there was a bit of a leftover burr from the factory process, but it still wasn't up to what I like a blade to be, so I sharpened both of these on the KME system. And now they are mirror sharp and certainly, you know, paper cutting sharp, bragging sharp, and stupid sharp, all of those adjectives. The other thing about the sharpening, in, in sharpening it, I discovered that um, these two knives, which I thought were identical, had very different um, bevel angles. This is about 20 degrees, which is what I would have expected. This was much steeper. It uh, took me a while to, with you know a sharpie and such to figure out how steep it was. Uh, this is about a 30 degree bevel. So I sharpened the both of those same bevels. So this remains about 20, this is about 30. And, uh, and I have a theory why that is. I think the 30 uh, was a deliberate decision as part of the all black design, because of course the, the bevel angle, as you lower the bevel angle, you get more beveled edge, and so you get more reflective steel there. And I think in an attempt to keep as much of this surface black as possible, they steepened the bevel angle. So that, that there we are, that reflective bevel edge would be smaller. Now, for a knife that is going to cut like six pieces of string in its lifetime, who cares what the bevel angle is? But I was surprised at that, and I'm wondering if that was a design decision to uh, optimize the blackness, or was it just uh, a fairly high variance in the manufacturing process? It would be interesting to know. So anyway, it did sharpen both of them to a very beautiful mirror. And we can see there, very nice mirror surface and is you know, way more than paper cutting sharp, and from what I've read will hold the edge quite well. I will say it was not easy to sharpen. The Almax steel is tough, and it was, uh, it was quite a, a, a lot of work, more than I'm used to, to get a, a good initial burr and to sharpen it down to this finish. So, anyway, I'm very happy with it now. And that's it for my don't like list. It wasn't a, a very long list, um, just minor nags. So let's go through my knife rating system. Uh, I think we'll, again, we'll just use one for the rating. Let's we'll start with the NTGK rating for non-threatening gentleman's knife, and we'll do non-threatening first. So for non-threatening, the uh, one of the important things is the opening mechanism. Now, and this opens quietly which I like. It doesn't go smack and call attention to itself. And uh, you can open it slowly. You don't have to flick it open so fast that it screams switchblade. That's good. And it is very formal looking. This jewel-like finish and this non-hunting knife shape makes it look like a faction accessory and, and not like a weapon. Um, and so I find the appearance is very good for being non-threatening. The only bad thing I can think of for non-threatening is that being a side flipper, you can't open it super slowly, and there is of course no way to open it with two hands. Now when I say that, of course, people will then show me that they can. Of course you can open it with two hands. You can open it with two hands by catching the blade. But uh, I've cut myself trying to catch flipper blades more often than I care to talk about, and I don't consider that a practical alternative. So, so the fact that it can only be flipped open is a little bit threatening. But uh, nevertheless, because of the appearance is just so disarming, I'd still give it an A plus for non-threatening. Now as a gentleman's knife, I'm, I'm going to rate the two of them separately at this point. Um, the good news for them is that they're fairly rare. Now it is a production knife and you can get them, but they are out of stock more often than not. So it's not that common a knife. And that's nice. Gentlemen's you know, collectibles should not be things you can get over the counter at Walmart. They are gorgeous. Gorgeous in this jewel-like way, or gorgeous in this you know, James Bond tuxedo way. They're minimalist. They're deep carry clips and light, so they're easy on your pocket. So all of those are good things. 
The only bad I would have is on the black, that tiny snag on the scale screw. You know, if I had an expensive fountain pen that had a snaggy spot on it like that, that, that bugged me every time I picked it up to write, that would count against it. So, um, so I'm going to give this an A plus as a gentleman's knife, and this one only an A as a gentleman's knife. So well, anyway, all told, A plus for non-threatening, A or A plus for gentleman's knife. I'd rate this thing as an A plus, as a non-threatening gentleman's knife. I really do think that is its intended purpose, and it does it very well. Now, how about the KN rating for knife nerds? What will my knife nerd friends think? Uh, well, the pros are uh, the Elmax steel. That's a well-respected steel. It holds an edge beautifully. They'll like that. Uh, the action. I have had non-knife nerd friends take this knife and flick it open after I explain to them how to do it, and they go, whoa, they really like that action. It's just you know, very pleasant and satisfying to open and easy to close. Um, the cons are, I know that some knife nerds want sort of heavy user knives. This isn't that. This is gentleman's pocket jewelry that you can cut with. So for my uh, knife nerd friends that are into hunting knives, uh, sorry guys, uh, not for you. Uh, I'm going to give it an A plus as a knife nerd rating because it's the knife nerds that appreciate non-threatening gentleman knives that I care about the most. And finally, the CMR, the cut myself rating. I'm going to give it an A plus. An A because I've never cut myself on it. And the plus is just because it feels so safe and easy to handle. Quite effortless opening, effortless closing. Just gives me a real feeling of confidence that I am unlikely to cut myself on it, as well as not having done so yet. And that brings us to the end of these two beautiful little knives. These are designed as gentlemen's carry, and I think they really succeed at that. They are simple, they are useful, light, deep carry, easy on the pocket, gorgeous to look at, and yet comfortable and practical as cutting tools. I have to say, you know, I'm really sorry that I didn't invest in one sooner. And uh, now, between the two of them, they're among my favorite carries for going to the office. Thanks for watching. See you again. Bye-bye.